second talk here in the Henry Thomas Room for today and our last talk before we break for lunch. Let me introduce our next speaker. He is a PHP internals expert, author of Xdebug, and an open street map and mapping enthusiast. He currently works at MongoDB on the PHP and HHVM drivers for MongoDB. Please welcome Derek Revens. Correct, correctly pronounced Pretty your name? Good, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks, Derek. My name is always a tricky one to get right. <laughs> All right, uh, well, I don't have to really talk much about myself now, right now because the introduction has been provided. Uh, just a, a, one word, I wrote a tool called Xdebug. Uh, you might be familiar with that. Uh, some of the talk will be uh, about that. Um, if you have more questions about it, I'm happy to, um, happy to take questions all during the presentation. Just raise your hand. Uh, somebody's hopefully going to run to you with a microphone in that case. So yes, I'm Derek. Uh, I'm Dutch. I'm also British. It's a long, long story, can do that later. Uh, and I like maps and I like beer. I also like whiskey, but there's no icon in a Unicode for whiskey. And if you have um, questions or a running commentary, then uh, you stutter if you like. All right, so today's agenda is we're going to talk about past, present, and future. Um, looking at how people tended to debug or rather not debug. Um, uh, how are we currently doing it? So I'm showing some things that most people end up doing it right now. And then we're going to look at uh, yeah, what is in there in the future. And hopefully some good things. Uh, all right, so pretty printing variables. You have um, a P3 variable, you dump it out. And if you, uh, how, how many of you still do this daily? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's still a quick way of doing it, right? You run Vardump and then something shows up on your screen. Yeah. If you do it with just PHP, you're going to have to use pre-tag around that so that it renders nicely in HTML. Or if you have Xdebug installed, you get slightly more interesting outputs like, like here. So it will show you different data types in different colors. It will uh, show you here when you have a reference back to your object. It also allows you to limit the length of strings being sent, which is kind of handy uh, if, in case you have like a, a file loaded in a variable somewhere and you're dumping this out, you don't want a megabyte of rubbish on your screen, right? So you get to uh, limit that. And there's lots of different settings in there, but Xdebug is not the only tool that does that. I need to remember to click outside of the frame there. All right, so a few settings. Anytime you do a Vardamp in Xdebug in the latest version, you also get the, the file name and line number where you have run that Vardamp, so that is new. And you get to format how this URL looks like by setting, making this setting, which is xdebug.file underscore link underscore format. If you do that, then it gets rendered whenever, you, whenever Xdebug outputs a file name and line number, and you get to click on it, and it can open directly into your ID, uh, which is great. You know, quite, quite handy. Um, lots of other things you get to limit there, like how many, how much data you show for a single variable, how many nested array levels you get deep, uh, how many array elements or object properties you get, and things like that. Um, it, but if you don't want it, you can turn it off, which is also handy in some cases. Like when you are having a uh, AJAX request and JSON comes back, you don't want PHP to come back there with HTML because the browser are not going to be able to understand that. So Xdebug's Vardamp output doesn't look the nicest because I don't really know where, to, where I can use certain HTML or CSS styles because I never know where in which context things get executed. <coughs> so helpers that come with frameworks are installable with other ways, like uh, through Composer. Because the developer more actively determines where the Vardamp is happening, they can allow for more interesting CSS and JavaScript styles to go with that. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> they found the light button, finally. Um, so this is a tool called Crumo. Um, Crumo, uh, you can install with Composer. Uh, by default, it doesn't really show anything, so you need to click on those links. And then it opens up. <coughs> just like you'd expect. It does do some interesting things as well. Like if it detects that you have a timestamp, so actually that light is not good because the 
the contrast of the slides goes really bad here. Somebody turn the light back off again. I, I can hardly see it myself here. Um, right. So on the bottom, it says <laughs> protected timestamp integer, and then it has the timestamp integer. And Crumo detects that this is a timestamp, and then will show you the time that goes with it, which it says it's October 2nd, 2014. Other tools, like the one on the next slide, eh, browsers, is a tool called Kint, does do something very similar. I don't think it looks not nearly as nice, but um, I'll show you what it does further down. It sees here that if you have a color string, it also renders that color to go with it. Interestingly, the color is the same as the background of the slide, so that isn't particularly useful here, <laughs> but uh, it does do that. What this, however, doesn't do is the timestamp. So there's many variants of these tools, but none of them do all of those nice things. So I would just hope they would get together and just sort it out at some point. Anyway, uh, something in Xdebug, which is great if you have somebody else's code base and you don't know what it is doing. Um, sometimes you get like notes and warnings and errors, and they are being silenced with the at sign, right? So you get a whole lot, lot of code, um, and it just suddenly stops working, and you don't know why. So Xdebug's scream operator, or its setting, uh, allows you to disable the at operator. So that means that if you use it in your code, then it really doesn't do anything, which is great. Um, story for myself many, many years ago, is where we were debugging an issue where uh, the code would suddenly would work fine on the, in a web server, but it would stop and do nothing on the command line. And we figured out that, uh, yeah, we couldn't really quite figure it out. Um, we tracked it down after several hours to be the at sign in front of MySQL Connect. But MySQL Connect couldn't find a host or the MySQL server was down or something. It would, it would always throw a warning and then return false. We would check in the code for false to make sure that, well, we, we handle the error cases, right? But what it doesn't cover is the MySQL Connect function not existing. Because that throws a fatal error and it instantly aborts. I have no idea why. So we couldn't handle that. The stream operator got written that afternoon, <laughs> or the, um, the code for this. All right, something else I'll be looking at is some tracing. And tracing is basically a way, again, if you get code that you've never seen before, getting a good overview of what happens in there. Uh, there's different types of traces that you can make in Xdebug. You can make textual traces, you can make parsable traces, and HTML traces. Um, it is probably better to show that than to have a slide for it. So live demo time, let's hope. <laughs> oh, I've done this many times. <laughs> oh, of course, the moment I say that, the, the cable falls out of the projector. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what I have done in my browser here, I have installed a browser extension. I think it's called the easiest Xdebug. Uh, there was an easy Xdebug and an easier Xdebug before that. <laughs> Uh, there are similar things also for, uh, for all the browsers, for Chrome and for Safari as well, but just the Firefox one. In here, uh, there's, it gives you three icons. It's like enable debug with Xdebug, which I'll get to in a moment. And there's also one for enabling tracing. And we, when we click that and reload the slide, and let's hope I've given off offerings to the demo gods, uh, I should get a file. I will make this a bit bigger in a second. So this file is just being created. When I open this, it takes some time. Um, yeah, it seems to be the correct time. So it shows you every function call that's been made when doing the, my slide request through the browser. It shows you the time index in the first column. It shows you the amount of memory in use in the second column. And then with the different nested levels, you get to see which function calls which function, on which line, which which arguments, um, you can either have things like, uh, it even shows you the return values of things. Like it shows here that SPL outload register returns true. And with the arrows, you can see which variables are being set and assigned. If you go through this line by line, you get to instantly understand what has happened in your code. This format is very difficult for other things to parse 
but there's a different format that makes it all tab separated. It also adds the memory usage and time index for leaving the function as well. And it's pretty trivial to write a tool or a quick script to go through this as a very simple profiling tool. You can easily infer uh, how much memory a specific function is using or how much time they've been taken and things like that. And it's, it's a 102 line script. It comes part of the XD book uh, download if you download it. Uh, you don't get it if you do it with Peckle install, but if you download a tarball, uh, you will see that. All right, that's tracing. Make this a bit bigger again. Um, some new features in XDBook 2.3 um, are all requested features by people. So the first one is hold level. You know that whenever you get a warning or an error notice, and sometimes you get those in like a, a, a for loop, and in the for loop, you're getting this error thrown 100,000 times because you have so many elements to loop over. It would be sometimes be really handy that the, the moment you get a notice or a warning that it stops the execution of the script. And that is what you get to configure with xdebug.halt underscore level. Um, you give it all the notice types and warning types that you want xdebug to halt your script on. When you set that, uh, set that, it will then abort your script, which is really handy in some cases. Similarly, some naughty code in libraries that you don't write yourself most of the time. They like messing with the error reporting and display error settings, right? I'm sure some of you have had that happen in the past. I know I have. And that is really annoying, especially if it is in a library that you don't really control yourself. So another feature in XDBook 2.3 is now um, this force error reporting and force display errors. So you can set these in PHP INI or in an HD access file. And the moment you set it, you cannot override it in your script. Not with any set, not with other ways of doing it. So it is really that value and there's no way you can change it. Which means that libraries can't mess, mess up and make your development experience worse. Yep, now this stops working. Oh no. And another thing is that looking at what's happened in your code after it has happened is a really nice thing to have. Like with the trace files, you can see everything that has happened. But it's even better if you can inspect your script while it is actually running. And with that, xdebug has a feature called live debugging. Sometimes you see it referred to as remote debugging, but remote isn't really important here. Basically what it means is your script runs, you get to set breakpoints, you get to look at what happened, all the different variables as they are being set and changed. So many different IDs for that. Just a show of hands here. Who uses PHP Storm? Who doesn't? Okay, so what, what do the others use? Just Coda, a, Sublime. Sublime? Atom. Atom. Coda. Coda, yeah. Vim, yeah. I think all of these, except for maybe Atom, doesn't have an XDBook plugin. Even if you're using Emacs, there's one for that too. No, you can stay, it's fine. <laughs> Submit a feature request to the Atom developers. Um, from what I gather, PHP Storm is probably the most widely used one. It also has one of the better debugging integrations. Uh, well worded, if you ask me, and I'm, I don't work for that, right? <laughs> uh, so I'll be showing that instead of just having a slide because slides are boring and live demos are fun. All right, well, I say that and then my slide doesn't advance. There we go. So PHP Storm on a slide. But we'll show you that. Um, install. Oh, I have two versions apparently. Oh, it's the name of my machine, I can't help it. Like I said, I like maps, beer, and whiskey, right? <laughs> All my machines are named after uh, sources of alcohol. <laughs> Except for the firewall, that's called water because it doesn't do anything useful. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, I have to admit I know absolutely nothing about WordPress. So we'll discover that as we go along. This is a bit on the smaller side. So I don't use PHP Storm, so I have no idea how this actually works uh, to make the font larger. Hints, people using this? Um, how do I do that? Anyway. Um, 
few. Oh. It does. Now I'm wondering, does the debugger work in this mode? And we're going to find that out very soon. All right. All right, so I'm going to turn off the trace file. That is important that you turn off the tracing, because if you don't, every single request is going to be traced. Making that your temp directory is going to be full before you notice it. Okay. So again, this browser extension, I clicked this little icon, request. Okay, of course. Uh, ooh, this is curious. I need to turn on the listing mode in the ID. So it can run. Oh, interesting. This is scroll down. Ooh, that works actually pretty well. This is awesome. <laughs> I need to click the start listening for PHP debug connections. And the moment I do that, it should listen to every request that comes in. So I reload the slide, and it says, ooh, I found WordPress, but I don't know where it is. Um, apparently, I hadn't selected the project yet, so I get to select the project, and then it works. Oh, yeah, even the debugger works. This is great. Thanks. <laughs> I learned something here. Um, so I go to the debugger. Console is also interesting, but I'm uh, not having the time for that today. So in debugger, oh, did, they didn't make the fonts of this bigger. How annoying. I shall re report a feature request. Um, right, so I thought I'd be debugging WordPress, but I reloaded the slides, so I'm debugging my presentation now instead. It doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. But you, what you can do, in the bottom here, you see where your current line of code is. And if you step into the function, by stepping, you actually start executing the code. So step into, or F7, I'm going to compose this require vendor autoload stuff. And I just do some magic. But you see, see here in the bottom left that I can still go back to the previous stack frame as well. So you get to switch and see the data for all of your function calls at the moment. Uh, there are no variable sets, so that's not particularly interesting. Oh, compose it, yeah, skip over that. Get loader, it does some things. I will skip out of this because it's not particularly interesting at the moment. So step out, steps out of your current function call, back into the caller function. I'll do it once more. Okay, this is a more interesting one where you can see here is that, I know it's very difficult to see even on, on my screen, it has two dots, which means static. So because this is a static function, you can still see this as it was sort of a object. You also get it if it is a object, so you get this because that is how you would refer to an object. For statics, you get the two uh, colons, and that is something that I've picked. You get to click that, and then in there, well, you can see all the variables that are being set. So in this case, there's a variable called instance list, which doesn't do anything. It has nothing in there yet. So doing some more scapping, st stepping. Because I now set a new element in that array, with the, name, with the keys default because that comes from here. Um, I can now expand this and it, should sh and it shows me the, the contents of that variable or that array element. And you can even go deeper in that so that you see all the properties of that one and so on and so on until, okay, this is going to continue endlessly because it's a recursive variable. So you can click those things until you run out of memory basically. So don't do that. So there's lots and lots of stuff in here. Uh, if you want, you get to change the values of all these variables and properties as well. Um, it's a really, really handy way to figure out what goes on. Um, other things that are kind of cool in here is that um, you get to set breakpoints by clicking in the border. So a breakpoint is basically means that if Xdebug hits this bit of code, stop the execution of your script so you don't have to go through all of it yourself by stepping. Uh, I'm actually not sure whether this line of code is being executed, so we'll, we'll find out. So I click resume program, that means continue executing from where we currently are. And that, indeed, it stopped a little bit later. In line 316, I still get to skip back to the previous one, uh, and back here, can, can basically see everything that goes on. Now, let me go back out of presentation mode, which I will be using many more times in the future. 
um, and go back to the slides. I need to turn off the debugger, otherwise I'll be debugging the rest of the presentation. All right, so PHP Storm. If you have never used this before, please have a look at this. Uh, did it turn it actually off? Yeah. Hang on. I didn't stop the debugger, and if I don't do that, then... Yeah, there we go. There's a whole other things you can set breakpoints break on as well. Uh, you can set them on exceptions when they're being set. You can set breakpoints on warning or notice. So to get a, a breakpoint in your IDE every time a warning or an exception happens. Uh, you get to see the values of constants now. Uh, I don't think PHP Storm shows that yet, but I'm sure it will so, do so in the future. Um, so yeah, there's lots of nice things in there. And that has already been released quite some time ago. To activate this debugger, you need to make basically three settings, or rather, you only have to do one, which is remote underscore enable, enable this thing. What is handy is to also make the setting remote connect back, which means that xdebug will look at the HTTP headers to find out which IP address made the browser request and then connect back to that IP address which is really handy if you are in an organization where you have a shared development machine so that you don't have to tell the debugger a specific IP address, but use the IP address of the machine that made a request, which is really handy to have. Called Remote Connect Back. If you want to do debug unit tests, you can do the same thing. Uh, the way how you activate it there is by setting an environment variable, the value of the IDE key doesn't particularly matter unless you're NetBeans, because they want to be special. Uh, I don't know. In a browser, I would rather activate it with one of my browser extensions. So there's the easiest xdebug for Firefox, there's xdebug helper for Chrome, and xdebug toggler for Safari. Um, there's also one for Opera, but Opera doesn't really exist anymore, so I've left it off the slide. As far as I know, there's nothing for IE. Uh, all right. So let's have a quick look at some other things. I've spoken about the primitive debugging with Vardom. I showed you some live debugging. I showed you some tracing. Um, Xdebug also helps PHP unit with code coverage. Anytime you do unit tests with code coverage, code coverage is something that tells you which lines of your code have been run for each test being executed. And in order for PHP unit to do that, it uses a functionality in Xdebug to collect that data. All right. Adding this functionality to Xdebug is very complicated because PHP's internals are really quite complicated. So whenever I add functionality to that bit, I use a different extension called VLD that um, tells me how PHP's internal structures are going on. And it's it's a tool that will dump you a opera, which is PHP's internal structures, for the main scripts, uh, functions, class methods, and it also does things like that code analysis. So it goes through your code and figures out which lines of code cannot be executed. For example, variable assignment after a return statement, or code that has been run after a, 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 an exception has been thrown by the throw keyword, and things like that. Um, and it also, because it follows all of the paths through your code, uh, every if statement, both yes and no, uh, it follows for loops, it gets a quite a good understanding of what happens in your code. So let's have a look at the if then else method here, or function here. It has two states, or two variables, really, A and B. And the function doesn't do anything particularly useful. It either, it <coughs> can echo both a is hit and B is hit, depending on which arguments you put in to the function. If you would run that with those two statements here, you will see that if you do code coverage, you have covered every single line, because it has covered this if statement that happens in whenever uh, A is true or false. Echo A is hit only happens when A is true, and similarly for B hit, which only echoes when B is true. But by calling those two functions, we've covered every single line there. But we haven't covered every single path through the function. So even though the code coverage is saying that 
you've covered 100% of the lines, that doesn't mean you have tested your function for 100%, because you're missing the true-true case and the false-false case. The author of PHP Unit, Sebastian Bergman, he's been bugging me for years to add something to Xdebug to uh, figure out which paths are being executed in your script. And that was not particularly easy to write. Just a quick look at what, what VLD outputs. It dumps this whole bunch of outputs here. Uh, we can go over that some other time. Um, happy to explain there. And in the bottom, it tells you all the different branches. So you remember if then else had five branches in there, right? The first one, until the first if statement, then the if statement both true and false, and then the second if statement also true and false. So there's five branches, but there's four parts to it. Seeing that from those slides is difficult, so I've made you an image for it instead. So on the, on the left hand side, uh, there's both a, a graph for if then else, but also for loopy, which I'll skipping for this, uh, this version of the presentation. And it tells you exactly the different branches by the, by the blocks, by the rectangles, and then the different options you can take from each block, which one gets executed next. So if A is through, it will follow the block that starts with OP5 to 7. And if B is hit, it will follow the block with OP10 to 12. So we now know which paths are possible after doing the analysis. Um, I have to admit, if you have a very complex function with hundreds of if statements, this is not going to work particularly well. Every time you do an if statement, you double the amount of possible paths. You run out of memory doing the analysis if there's too many of them. It's not a good reason to keep your functions nice and short. Anyway, when I have the paths, I can now figure out which ones are actually executed. And um, uh, Xdebug helps you with that. So PHP unit uses internally something called PHP code coverage, which you can also use independently without PHP unit, which is handy to do. And that's what I've done in this slide. So I'm requiring Composer to do the, uh, to pull in code coverage. I start it up and I have two test cases. The first one here, if then else with true and false. And in the second case with if then else false and true to emulate the cases from a few slides ago. And when you then show this in code coverage, you get this, right? You get 100%, everything is green, everything is happy. But that's not really quite the case. Because we know we haven't covered true, true, and false, false. This is where Xdebug's branch coverage comes into play, which is a new feature in 2.3. And yeah, it needs support in PHP code coverage to render this in some way. And although Sebastian has been bugging me for years to implement it, I've now been bugging him for a year and a half to get that in PHP code coverage. And as far as I know, that it's still not been done. I don't know what to say there. <laughs> in any case, uh, you get to output from Xdebug those different branches and paths as well now, because uh, it collects that information. And then you need a way to render this. And that is not trivial, because with four possible paths, it's quite easy to do, right? You have a different color for each different part. If it's a solid line, it means it's been followed. If it's a dashed line, it has not been followed. But for that is doable. Re try to imagine what happens if you have 100 parts. Right? It makes it really difficult to then figure out what actually happens. So somebody needs to come up with a clever way of showing which parts have been followed and which ones haven't been, and then give you some useful metrics on. Uh, not trivial to do. All right. Done with that bit, let's look at some time travel. Uh, not into the future, sadly. We're only going to go in the past. Before I start with that, remember the things that I've shown you early. I've shown you tracing that shows you everything that has happened during your script. I've also shown you live debugging, where you get to live debug a running script. One thing you cannot do in live debugging is stepping backwards. You can't step backwards is because of several things. Some internal PHP things, like if you have entered a for each loop, you cannot get out of that without, um, without memory leaks in PHP itself. 
if you have executed an insert statement into a database, you cannot uninsert it. If you do update a value, you can't, cannot un-update a value in a column. You can't do that, right? But it would be really handy that if you could combine the trace files together with PHP's live debugging, which means that you get to create a trace of your whole execution of your script, and then later give this file to somebody else and run a live debugging session over that. And because at that moment I've already recorded every single state during the execution, I can do a step back and figure out what was the state one statement earlier, which is kind of handy. It actually would allow you to, if you have a host that, you know, if you produce a product that other people install on their own servers, they're having issues with that. You can ask them, well, enable the tracing, give me the trace file, which will also include uh, the contents of every source file and things like that. And then a support team, or you, <laughs> which is probably going to be the support team, will be able to play back and forwards to the execution of that particular instance to get to figure out exactly what goes on, what caused the issue, because you have everything in there that you need after the fact. So that is something called Wayback, and I've been working on that for some time. It is going to work as another tracing module, like the ones I've shown you earlier, uh, by a different format number. It doesn't really matter which one it is. Um, and it will act as a DBGP client, just like Xdebug is, uh, to play back those recorded traces, as it was PHP running at that same time. It will require some additional functionality in IDEs, uh, like PHP Storm needs to have an extra button that allows you to step back, or a slider that allows you to go forwards and backwards through the whole time frame. And it's quite a lot of work still to be done here. I started working on this, and I was happily going along, and then um, PHP 7 happened. And PHP 7, Although for users, it is very few changes, if you write extensions, it is a pain, a massive pain, really. Uh, but yeah, that is progress, right? <laughs> All right, so that means that way back is now going to be way in the future, because I need to go back in it. Actually, I have to rewrite it as well, because PHP 7 is so different. Um, it compiles, though, which is always handy. Uh, all the test cases pass, um, uh, but yeah, PHP, Seven meant like rewriting XDBug. Everything had to be redone that touches internal structure, which is about 60% of what XDBug really does. Uh, that took a lot of time. It took uh, nearly a year to do that. But it works now. All the test cases passed, and I released it about a month and a half ago or so. Uh, it still has a few bugs in there, but um, it's good enough for people to use. And if you find a bug, please let me know, and I'm happy to go fix it. So XDBook 2.4 came out. It also has another tool in there, again, requested by Sebastian for PHP Unit. He wanted a way to blacklist certain functions from being used, uh, because some functions are easel, apparently. I don't know. I don't know what, he's, what, he, what he was going to get at there. And that is something called function monitoring, which will collect every time a specific function has been executed or called. Uh, by recording the file number, no, the file name and line number uh, where this function call was being made from. And it looks a little bit like this. So we start the function monitor with start function monitor. You give it an array of functions or uh, method names or static method calls and things like that. You can even give it closures as long as you give it the correct line and file numbers. Um, and then every time that function is being called, it will get added to an internal list which you get to retrieve by calling xdebug get monitored functions. And then you get a result like this. So you get a function name, the file name, and the line number where this one was called from. And then if you are a PHP unit developer, then you can easily tell you, oh, you're using this function in this line, and you really shouldn't be doing that, that kind of things. All right, so I'm skipping that slide because that's the wrong event for that. Um, yeah, that's about what I had to talk about. Uh, if there's any questions, I'm happy to hear about them right now. But there's one right in the back. Thank you, Derek. Let's give a round of applause just first Thank to Derek. You. Thank you so much. We don't have a lot of time for questions. We have about five minutes, so we have just a couple. Yep. And then we have lunch, which I will also be attending. So you can ask me more questions there later. There's one right in the back. Oh, got it. Hello. Um, with the function monitoring, how would it 
work with uh, class methods and et cetera? Uh, you can specify class name, arrow, method name as a string. So instead of using the string for the function name, what you can use is class name, arrow, method name, or class name, double colon, static method name. So you get to specify those two. I think I might at some point extend this to having like, um, you can put in a callable in there as well to, to register those, but I haven't done that yet. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yep, right there. Um, you mentioned you've obviously had to rewrite for PHP 7. Yeah. Do you, is there any support for HHVM? Oh, that's an interesting question. So HHVM has implemented some of XDebug. They have implemented some of the functionality and they have implemented live debugging. The last time I tried that, it would crash all over the place. Uh, but yeah, they have support. for sort of support, between quotes. <laughs> all right, anything else? Nothing? Oh yeah, right there. I was pointing at you. It's not really a question, but yeah, I think as okay. possibly the only person that said I was using Atom. Oh right. <laughs> there, there is one called PHP Debug, but I've not tried it. I've just installed it, but I've not actually run it yet. All right. There well, is one there. Okay, good luck. <laughs> I'm happy to hear the results of this experiment. <laughs> All right. So, question: If you have no questions, I'll ask questions. Um, so, how many of you have used X Debug before today? How many ha hadn't, that I should probably ask. Are you going to now? Yes, yes. that's what I like to see. <laughs> All right, uh, slides are going to be online here. They aren't quite there yet. Uh, the session has also been recorded. Um, I was instructed that I probably should screen, screen record the demos so that I can put them in the, in the, re in the recordings. So I'll have to <laughs> spend some time on that in the next few days, I guess. If you have any further questions, uh, feel free to email me. Um, I am usually pretty good replying to email, but not all the time. And if I don't reply, just send me another email. I'll get to you at some point. Um, yeah, if that's everything, thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference and lunch. Thank you, Derek.